Good morning, John. I'm in Seattle, and I'm very tired, and traveling with a two-year-old is very easy. And also, vegetarian sandwiches in Montana are not the saddest thing ever. All right, I'm going to, if this is okay, and it doesn't matter if it's not, because no one's here to tell me otherwise, continue the discussion that we've been having for the last two videos. Last week, even before you put your video out, I tweeted a tweet that you, of course, did not see because you are not on Twitter, and thus you probably don't even know that the President of the United States invited a football team to the White House to eat McDonald's. The tweet read thusly. For the people who watched my most recent video, can you tell me one healthy thing that fuels you and one unhealthy thing that fuels you? I'll start. One, I feel good when I help other people experience joy. Two, I feel good when I am more successful than people who I dislike. This actually spawned a great deal of surprisingly healthy conversation on Twitter. So I'm actually kind of proud of it. It was like I used Twitter to do a good thing. Of course, later on I undid all this hard work by tweeting this, so... You know. But I heard from so many smart people with good thoughts about healthy and unhealthy fuels, and it made me think a lot of things. And there are certainly many more interesting things to think about this than the ones I'm about to throw at you. But here are a few things that I thought that I think are interesting. First, people's healthy fuels were commonly about one of two things. One, positive emotions about other people, like love, loyalty, even an obligation to other people or to like humanity as a whole. Or two, a feeling of like progress, of doing something that you're really good at, which is really an interesting one to me because it seems like it's possible for this one to exist without even internal or external validation. It's just there and it just feels good. That one seems very rare and precious and I wanna find it more. Second, people's unhealthy fuels were often, though there were, I feel like, a wider variety of these, seated in one of these two things. One, negative feelings about other people. Lots of people just wrote the word spite and had that to be done with, but also like general revenge or anger or even fear of other people. Two, and this was, I think, the most common one, negative feelings about yourself. And this wasn't like, I'm afraid I'm going to disappoint my parents because that's your parents' emotion. This was, I'm afraid I'm going to be disappointing. And that is surprisingly a different thing, like being af afraid that you're going to disappoint someone else versus like being a disappointment in total. Very different, though they sound exactly the same. And the third thing I thought, John, especially as I read a lot of comments from people who I really admire and respect and who have done what I consider to be really wonderful things, is that I think that you can burn unhealthy fuels and have a good outcome. And you talked about in your video that you weren't able to like write what like the good parts of looking for Alaska until you found a healthier fuel to burn. But I think that it is possible to do good things with unhealthy fuels. And I have not shied away from at times burning those unhealthy fuels. But I think that the important thing is that we recognize what they are when we're doing it and, and that there might be a long-term negative outcome. It's almost like taking on cognitive debt. But just like when you're taking on debt, you gotta recognize that when you're doing it, you should be doing it for really good reasons. And also, that there might eventually, or even right now, be alternatives. Some kind of alternative fuel that might be a little less efficient, might burn a little less bright, but might be a whole lot more sustainable. You gotta get some solar panels up on your psyche, everybody. John, those are the things that I wanted to say. I gotta go do PodCon stuff now, and I'll see you on Tuesday. <laughs> Orin's in the other room now saying, PodCon. PodCon. Can you, Orin, can you say PodCon?